Good morning, everyone. Uh, I welcome today's speaker, uh, Ravish Choudhury, and BVA members and guest who is attending this session on Valuation under Income Tax Act 1961 and Conduction with the Companies Act 2013. You know that when as a registered valuer, we are notified under Companies Act under and in IPC, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, and there are many other acts and statutories are there like where we need to be recognized. Uh, one is income tax, FEMA, and also SEBI regulations and wealth tax. The valuers bill may help to get this recognition to the registered valuers. Whereas when whatever we are doing valuations under Companies Act, once you, we get any uh, client call, like first we will ask them like the purpose of valuation, whether for it is an issue of shares or it is for buyback, or it is for CCPS. And also we, the next question is like, we will ask them whether any foreign shareholders, if we have any foreign shareholders, again, we need to get valuation under uh, FEMA to submit to RBI and to get again for uh, from CA or chart, cost accountant or merchant banker. And it is a very hard to the client okay, to get different valuation reports from a registered valuer again from a uh, cost accountant or chart accountant or merchant banker for FEMA purpose. Again, for income tax purpose, it is from a uh, chart accountant. Maybe the valuers bill will help us to bring all this thing to a uh, registered valuer. And with this, uh, I would like to introduce the today's speaker, uh, CA uh, Ravish Choudhury. He's a fellow member of uh, ICI and he's a registered valuer and also he's a secret, uh, social auditor and he's having more than 12 years of experience and currently he's a partner at R. Choudhury and Co. based at Lucknow and looking after direct and indirect tax consultancies and audits. And he has taken more than 20, uh, 200 hours of teaching for compulsory training under the Companies Act for uh, under Divya Jyoti Foundation, a registered under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India. And he is also a nominated member for exam committee and expert committee of Divya Jyoti Foundation. And he is a nominated member of Lucknow Co Committee. And mostly he has authored uh, three books. It is uh, like a comprehensive uh, on valuations for ready reckoner for valuers covering under Companies Act, IPC, FEMA, and India. And also he's authored uh, MCQs for social auditors. Thank you, Ravish, for accepting our invitation and uh, for taking the session. And we are most okay looking, what is the difference like under Companies Act, under uh, income tax, when we are doing valuations? Because as a valuers, we know that okay, like we, we give same valuations or same DCF to use for income tax and the Companies Act, but it is not correct. If you go in depth and investigation, it is not at all correct. Uh, and also I thank Shiv Prasad for introducing the today's speaker, Ravish Choudhury. Thank you, Shiv Prasad, for wonderful support uh, to always to Bangalore Valor Association. Now, uh, over to Ravish Choudhury. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Shankarji. Thank you so much, Vijita. And uh, of course, Shiva Prasad ji. Uh, today we'll have a kind of, uh, I think, um, study circle, right? So we have a two-way communication, not just one-way communication, because I also want to learn many things from you all, right? So let me start with something, a question. Let me heat the engine and then we'll go ahead. Uh, let me ask a question. Ki, what is valuation? Valuation is more, to, more of a story or numbers. It's, it's a game of numbers or it's more about writing stories and making some, you know, fairy tales. What do you think? What it is? I, I, I insist everybody to just answer with a law, with a, you know, with a reasoning. It is storytelling. Okay. And, and storytelling along with numbers. Yeah. Which, which have more weightage, the story or the numbers? It is story. Yeah. Anybody else wants to answer this? And uh, members can just open your cameras also. I can see some beautiful faces. Okay. So, is Ravi storytelling Jindal, supported by numbers? Ravi Chandranji, what do you think? It's more about story writing or it's about numbers, you know, calculating, determining the number. It's 
what it is we are, we are not able to hear you sir both both okay <laughs> okay see story 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 to arrive the numbers moral the story is numbers getting numbers okay in last 3 years presenting the... presenting numbers in a story form sir that that See, I have observed in last three years, people start, uh, people have started answering the numbers. Now they are, you know, inclining to the story, and this is the correct approach. Valuation is basically more of story rather than numbers. The uh, why? The reason is, you know, every valuer have a different approach. Every valuer have different premise. Every valuer has a different thought process when they are determining a particular uh, for equity. If I uh, give a particular company to Venkatesh ji, uh, Shiva ji, Ravi Chandran sir, right? So everybody will have a different number. That is for sure. Nobody will have same numbers, right? So everybody will have a different number. So who is correct? Who is wrong? This, this now the questions come. This, who is correct? Who is wrong? Everybody is correct and everybody is wrong, right? But your story will save your skin. Your story makes, you know, the reader understand how the valuer has arrived to this number. And if the, if the user, sorry, if the user is not satisfied with the story or the number of the number of valuer, which he arrived, he may go to another valuer and he can ask him to value the share. Right. So, if you see section 247 subsection uh, section 247 subsection 3 and 4 which talks about the penalty what is the penalty if there is a negligible you know if there is carelessness in the uh, your valuation report then 50000 rupees else there is a provision of imprisonment also and section 247 subsection 4 what is said if section 247 subsection 3 is imposed or it is invoked then the particular person has to repay, you know, pay back the fees which he has earned, and also he has to give good for his loss. So, to mitigate the risk, if a valuer has a descriptive kind of report, if he has written all the premises, basis of valuation, and uh, his logics, his reasoning, his thought process, what is what he was thinking while drafting this report then nobody can challenge your report and of course the standards if you have followed it so nobody is going to challenge your report and if the user is not satisfied with the re my report you can of course go to the another value even the competent court has also said you see uh court has said i am not the person who can value a share but of course i can see if the sop is followed or not if the particular uh you know standards of procedures has been followed or not or the standards of valuation has been followed by a valuer or not. So a story saves you. This is the first thing which you need to know about. If I'm writing a you know valuation report for 40 pages, let's say, so I dedicate 36 pages, 37 pages on the story, on the background, because it will going to save your skin. Right. Okay. And and now, Ramesh, one more thing. See, even once we issued the valuation report. After two to three years, if you see that the projections, whether they have met or not, even 99% cases, they don't meet the, Absolutely. the projections, whatever we have given. Absolutely. Like, okay, if the, some income tax people, okay, the authorities may ask, like, how did you project this, okay, when they have not met? Maybe you can cover that also today's session. Uh, Vengreshi, there, there, there was a, there, there was a uh, argument with uh, SSE and income tax officer he has declined i'll i have this uh, one of the case study also on this the assessing officer declined on the basis that the projections are too huge, too high and uh, you have not achieved because assess the assessment comes after two or three years right. so they the assess the assessing officer has compared the actuals with the projection and he has declined the valuation report we'll come out we'll talk on this also Okay, so it's more about story than the numbers. Of course, the calculation should be correct. I'm not saying this just about story. Okay, now uh, my another question which I'm going to ask is, what is the what is basis? What we mean by basis of valuation and premise 
we read a lot about basis, premise, basis, premise. What is actually the basis of valuation and premise of valuation, which we generally use the terms in our valuation report? Anybody? Anybody? What is the basis and premise? Sir, Jai Jain, sir. Jai Jain, Navin Singhal. Yes, sir. Joy, sir, please. <laughs> Joy sir, please. Tirak sir, anybody? Tirak sir is still connecting. What is basis? What, what do you mean by basis of valuation? Okay, let me tell you. See, basis of valuation is nothing but the value which you're deriving. For example, if I am deriving a fair value, yes, Naveen Singhalji, absolutely correct. If I am deriving fair value, then the basis of valuation is fair value. If I'm deriving liquidated value, then my basis of valuation is liquidated value or distress value, right? So basis is, is actually the, the type of value you are deriving. So it is nothing but what kind of value you are actually deriving. I'm deriving distress value. I'm deriving fair value. I'm deriving, uh, let's say, uh, synergical value or whatever value I'm deriving. What is premise? Absolutely correct, uh, Naveen sir. Premise is your assumption that the company is a going concern or the company is going to liquidate. It is a assumption. Prime is, premise is nothing. It is a uh, it is just an assumption. And when you are drafting your valuation report, you should mention premise, going concern basis of value, fair value, or liquidated value. It should be on your valuation report so that the reader may know what exactly value are you trying to get. Now, my third question before I start, you know, the slowly, slowly, I want to heat the engine and then we'll start running in the fourth gear. So maybe sixth gear. So my next question and the last question before we start our session is, is it correct? To apply net asset value for going concern. I have seen a lot of reports, you know, they apply net asset value. Is it? I know Shiva sir, you know, but I will not uh, ask you to answer it. The others may answer it. So is it correct to apply a net asset value? Or it's okay because in valuation standard says there are three kind of approaches which you can use. And one of them is, of course, replacement method and net asset value or cost method. So do you think it is correct to use net asset value for going concern sometimes? It is based on if, if, if the projections are not uh, properly or the projections are not meeting the assets. See, for example, in few cases, okay, the assets will be more than projections or the uh, profits, then we can use the net asset value method. Okay. Because if you see Tata Steel, maybe the share price is very less. If you value at net asset value, it will be more than the DCF method. Okay. So uh, I'm talking about adjusted net NAV. Okay. So, okay. Many people are saying, yes, we can apply. Sir, my question is, if we are going to uh, value a share through net asset value or adjusted NAV, that doesn't mean, does it means that it is better to sell off the company rather than uh, you know, doing business. Does our approach, if we apply, if you are saying it is a going concern and we are applying adjusted NAV method or replacement cost method, isn't uh, we saying that it's better to sell of the assets, it's better to dilute the company than to run the company? Generally, the objective of the company is to do business and earn more, more income rather than simply buying and selling of assets. So when we are correct, when we are doing, uh, you know, applying this approach, isn't this that our con we are contradicting with the going concern? It's better to sell off the business. Correct. To some extent, we are contradicting. Yes, but... exactly. See, it is. It's okay. I also apply what I'm trying to say. I also apply in many cases uh, adjusted NAV to derive particular, uh, you know, value, value. But 
एज अ प्रैक्टिकल अप्रोच आई एम सेइंग एज अ प्रैक्टिकल सिनेरियो आई एम सेइंग कि सर बाय अप्लाइंग एडजस्टेड एनएवी मेथड आर वी ट्राइंग टू से द यूजर कि लुक इट इज बेटर टू सेल ऑफ द बिजनेस इट इज बेटर टू सेल योर एसेट्स बिकॉज़ देयर आर फेचिंग मोर मनी देन टू रन द बिजनेस बिकॉज़ योर प्रोजेक्शंस सेइंग दैट यू विल इन फ्यूचर यू विल अर्न लेस in comparison to uh, in comparison if you sell off your assets right now so it's 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 correct to use nav yeah. when there is no future prospects for the company then if, it is better to dispose of the assets yes if there if there is no if, if the value which we derive through going concern using dcf method projections of comparable company method it is coming less and the uh, if we sell off the business that is and adjusted net net asset value we are getting more money so do you think that the uh, presumption going concern is correct in future the company will survive or not the, it's better to sell the business more I mean, than every, see more everybody than, uh, i uh, highest and best use uh, uh, indicates that uh, say yes. it is better so, to so uh, the best use is to sell off the assets i would like to make a comment here when we look at accounting standard for impairment it says realizable value or carrying value asset in use or value in use whichever is higher that is to be kept in the books of accounts hmm. okay hmm. and now one of the arguments could be i have not read the arguments behind that uh, you know accounting standard could be that as of today when the business managers they are managing the when they are projecting the business the firm projection as per given circumstances or whatever they can foresee and without considering contingent businesses contingent new business lines they foresee that there is a, a, you know asset in use value is lower than realizable value however they would keep on working to make it more than what is the realizable value and that's the premise why they are still running the business See. if they are convinced that if they are convinced that value in use would always be lower than its uh, uh, its realizable value then probably it makes sense to sell off the business see uh, accounts when we uh, talk about accounting policies when we talk about accounts accounts is basically based on conservative approach absolutely on conservative approach in every aspect in case of revenue also in case of uh, impairments or in case of uh, expenses we go for a conservative approach but not in case of valuation accounts and valuation is totally different leases operating leases financial leases the treatment in the accounting as per the accounting standard and as per the valuation is totally different you know so mr mr ravish i think uh, conservative approach hold could only for uh, i gap financials but if the uh, entity is uh, using the indices always they go with the fair value no nahi wo that's a fair value but when we talk about uh, you know uh, impairment it's basically a conservative approach no but even impairment also you, that depends upon which uh, according but, sir, uh, but yeah. sir you don't value assets on uh, you know fair market value fixed assets it's not fair, fair market we do value assets fixed fair value it's not fair oh, market okay. for checking for the purpose of checking uh, the impairment no but, no no it's a impairment definition is if your book value is 100 your carrying it's, it's basically the carrying value and the realizable value which are less will be there realizable value or value in use whichever is less which is less will be there because value in, no, no 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 value in use or real, value uh, in use or realizable value whichever is higher that is kept in the books of accounts when you see sir even if you see this um, sir, investment account fair value of investment in case of i gap we go with the um, uh, cost navin sir um, navin sir it says ki if the carrying if the uh, realize uh, value in use is more than the carrying value then carrying value will be there but that's the value only ha ha no if, what i'm saying we look 
so it's more about conservative approach i'm saying that there's there's no relation with accounting treatment and the valuation valuation is totally different valuation does not say that I, you I, have to sir, go I, for so the fundamental we are differing i valuation i'm not aware tell me investment see i sir. see i am just i'm just trying to tell you ki if we are if having a presumption of going concern and we are valuing a particular a company with a concept of realizable value of this particular all the assets adjusted net asset, net asset value what we are trying to tell valuers of course we are we am trying to tell valuer that you sell off your business if i sell off my business right now the value per equity is coming 150 rupees but as per dcf it is coming 120 rupees so what we are trying to tell the Uh, user, the company user, uh, the the company board, or what we are trying to tell the company shareholders, we are trying to tell company shareholders that look, sell if you sell off business right now, you will fetch more money. Then you uh, you know run the company for ages because what we do in DCF method, we calculate the present value of the cap per perpetual cash flows. and the perpetual cash flow the aggregate value of perpetual cash flow today is less than the uh, the amount which we derive in selling of the business is more so are, are aren't we saying that it's better to sell off the business when we are when we are writing a report i'm saying i i also i also do many cases we are telling actually. we are telling them that they need to do better they need sir, to sir 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 when you have a projections how can you say ki you have to do better yeah yeah these are the projection as of today na so they have to ha they have to improve means, they have to work sir, towards improving those projections sir what i what i do i will tell you in many cases we uh, let's say a company which is not frequently traded or, or not sorry a company who, which is not listed but it is big company we i personally value share through first of all i try to find its adjusted nav let's say the adjusted nav came 120 rupees now i know if my dcf is coming 110 rupees then the projections is wrong if the company is earning huge the projections are wrong i try to find the mistakes in the projections if the projections coming more then the navy method i am rest assured ki yes the projections are now okay if the difference is huge then i try to find what is the reason that difference is huge what i am trying to tell you sir ki if if we follow going concern if we have a premise of going concern and we are applying the navy method it's simply saying it's okay for small companies i am telling you it is okay for small com- private companies we are doing it for the sake of inconvenience or the sake of convenience or we have not got the projections okay we are applying it but if for a big companies please do not apply any navy method because it is saying that it can be challenged on the ground that it is better to sell off the business rather than running the business and if the projections are less we cannot say the company that you have to improve your projections no we are not the advisor of the company we are just driving a value for the company that's all it's our scope and if the projections are less nobody is going to invest in your company that is for sure for example navin ji if you have money and you want to invest in my company and my investment in my the com- and your intention is to you know invest in my company uh, not to acquire the control on the assets but you want to invest in my company for profits for deriving dividends for deriving wealth creation not in not in your mind it is that i want to uh, you know uh, have that particular land or the assets i want to control it no you just want to invest in my company you will exit with profits and if 
my projections the value which i have derived through projections is less then the nav method will you apply will you invest money in my company or not this is the question if in my opinion the business is worth more than what is coming through nav if i when i look as an investor that the projections are conservative and i see it a value buy i would be very happy to buy sir you will buy on the basis of valuer's value determined or you will ignore that if the if i find that the valuation assumptions are or the projections are very very conservative i will Nein, i will how, go ahead and how, buy how how you will determine that sir you will you will of course uh, you will hire some professional to do it let's say you are investor just not a chartered accountant or the valuer you just say i can tell you business people know the value much better than the valuer then what is the use of valuer sir they help in putting their process, thought process together they put it systematically no sir i am sorry it's not like that when when there's a big deal are you telling me ravish uh, this will be like a, maybe some uh, useless argument that valuer know the value of any business better than the business no no, no 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 i'm not saying that sir valuer is just deriving value on the basis of the uh, inputs given by the project uh, the management absolutely it's, so it's not the it's not the valuer who is writing the projections who is not making the projections it's the company who is saying with having all the you know professionals sitting with them they are uh, they are trying to get the realistic um, uh, projections they are trying the level best with having ratio analysis with having the you know uh, number of uh, uh, number of outstanding uh, days for your debtors and creditors they they when you have a big company they try to get the realistic value i tell you in one of my cases there's a one of my cases where uh, uh, two big oil companies having uh, a 98% holding in a company which is a limited company but not listed their nav method was uh, if i i have applied uh, first of all i try to check what is the minimum value which should come what is the minimum value which should come i applied nav method i i got 138 rupees okay this is the my base it any value be, below 138 shall not be there then because it was a company uh, which has a comparable in uh, list, uh, we have a lot of oil companies gas companies listed so we have a comp company comparable method we can apply i have checked through ccm the value was coming 48 rupees i went to uh, the company um, ceo and i said sir when i did ccm method it is coming 48 rupees when i am going for nav method it is coming 138 rupees what why there is a difference we need, we try to understand the company entire thing and we arrived that the company the cc the companies which are listed on stock exchange have very less or no no debt whereas in this company there's a huge debt which forces the value to come 48 rupees and we have declined that method that ccm is not i have calculated ccm on my valuation report yes i have done but i have declined on the basis that it is not correct because this this is this is the reason then we have approached to a uh, company and they i asked them to give me the uh, the projections when i did uh, value with you know uh, playing with projections we got a value around 142 rupees without you know hanky panky just 142 rupees so the difference between 138 and 142 was very small so i understood that the uh, projections are really good and it is correct because if 138 rupees is coming in nav and it's let's say uh, you know applying dcf method i'm coming to 100 rupees so there is something wrong because nobody is going to invest in a company for profits for profits nobody is going to invest in a company where the nav is more and dcf is less what i'm trying to say is like i'm not arguing that nav is not the correct approach i also use many many times what i'm trying to say sir 
कि वेन देर आर टू पीपल देर आर टू काइंड ऑफ इन्वेस्टर वन इन्वेस्टर इज लुक्स फॉर ग्रोथ वन इन्वेस्टर लुक्स फॉर इन्वेस्टिंग इन कंपनी टू टू यू नो अर्न प्रॉफिट वेल्थ क्रिएशन एंड वन ऑफ द पर्सन इन्वेस्टर हु लुक्स फॉर एक्वायरिंग द एसेट्स कंट्रोल ऑन द एसेट्स वेन अ पर्सन इज लुकिंग इज Uh, when a person is investing money in a company to acquire assets if you have applied dcf or nav doesn't matter because its intention is to acquire the control on the assets but if a investor normal investor not very uh, you know investor having uh, you know too much uh, valuation uh, you know uh, minds and all so when a, a simple person layman person is uh, buying some uh, buying or investing in some company his and his motive is to earn profit just profit and he want to exit from it then for the you know if you get into the shoes of that investor and if you apply if a valuer is applying any we method he should reject the valuation he should he should say sir i am not here to con- get control on the assets i am here to invest in the as- growing assets what are the growing assets there are two kind of assets growing and the fixed assets growing assets which makes which earns income for you if the growing assets the income earned by the growing assets is less then if i come i dilute a company right now the future of company is in dark because ultimately the company will say sell off my assets because i am not running in profits as it should be so what i am just trying to say that whenever you try you know valuing a share or valuing a company first you understand the intention of the investee or the investor the investor is going for you know earning the profits generating the profits and eating the profits wealth creation then of course we cannot we should not apply any av method this is what i am trying to say because we can argue anything but of but one thing is for sure that when we trying to find adjusted nav method it means that we are selling of the company it absolutely means if i sell the company right now i am getting so so money so much of money and when i talk about dcf it says that the company will run in future the company will be perpetual and we are trying to find the present value of the earnings of the company and it is basically a going concern what is going concern the company will run in future it's not like the company will die today if i sell of the company today if the if i sell of the assets today i will get so or so money so i'm just trying to say if your premise is a going concern how can we go for any we method yes it is acceptable in because international valuation method is or international stat valuation standards says and we can apply nobody can challenge to that extent but as a introspective you know uh, you have when we talk about the going concern of course we should see rajiv sir uh, sir thank you for allowing uh, sir no. agar aap sir agar if you open your camera then i'll be more you know sure. okay sure. thank you sir uh, sir uh, now uh, my submission was at times what happens is uh, uh, we have to be opting for hybrid method in case it is in uh, kind of say uh, sort of uh, you are opting for this as a next a step where you requirement ke okay yes we have to be going in for uh, adjusted nav plus dcf then uh, i uh, i'll wait for my, uh, the, for, for that uh, question or in case it is not in your agenda and please allow me to take up that question right away no 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 you are right you are right you are right sir uh, in many cases we have we drive value through ccm also nav method also and uh, dcf also and then we give weightage this is your point sir no sir uh, then in that case uh, please allow me to uh, carry please. on with my question sir please. now sir what is happening is uh, uh, this particular unit of a company is being sold which is having some uh, underlying uh, asset as well which is that uh, practically peanuts let's say 1 crore rupees whose uh, fair market value is say 100 crore rupees now this business is running making profit year on year but in case i opt for dcf method exclusively for this particular asset and let's say uh, this value is coming to 20 cr now uh, in case you ask me to uh, only opt for uh, adjusted net asset uh, value method because dcf is uh, so low 
and it would be uh, 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 kind of say why i should uh, sell the unit then i'll uh, better sell off that asset itself and uh, uh, will uh, retain that unit with me uh, and keep on making profit from there from now what uh, i opted for was i opted for adjusted nav uh, adjusted nav uh, method that is 100 cr went in for a normalized uh, uh, rental notional rental uh, method because uh, within that very premises same set of asset was available let's say for 1 lakh rupees uh, per month rental basis so i opted for dcf taking cognizance of rental uh, thing uh, came out to a, a net uh, uh, net uh, uh, net income and uh, tax there upon and arrived at the dcf method and into that dcf method uh, added 100 crore you uh, the opting for because then i was getting a value of around 115 crore 20 crore i was getting plain basis dcf method because i was not paying any rental in case i take cognizance of rental and taxation there upon and all that stuff my dcf came down to 15 crore rupees and Uh, uh, added to that was hundred crore. I opted for hundred fifteen crore because then I am getting the value of my business also, value of this asset also, and that is how I proceeded with, which was uh, approved by uh, the, the uh, board as well. And uh, by chance, the board uh, also had a, 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 a registered value itself as a board member, and uh, the, it, it will be improper, uh, improper for me to name that gentleman. Is once again part of that uh, this uh, BVA forum itself. Please, uh, uh, I um, I think my question is clear, sir. Yes, sir. That, yeah, that's yeah. Looking that's looking forward that, to your guidance, sir. That's, Thank you. That's a good that's a good approach. Uh, or still, I'll say when you are trying to find DC value through DCF, right? And you find find some asset. I, other than this question, you sir, you have correct done correctly. There's no question on it because you applied your uh, you know the uh, approach. and you have written it i have no doubt on it it's 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 correct approach you can go ahead with it and one more thing which i want to add because you have uh, you know uh, touched that particular point when we are driving dcf method we need to check we need to check that there are some assets which are not in use for example i have arrived at dcf method and i have checked that there is a land which is not in use no factory is built up on the land even it is in fixed assets no factory is there in the land the land is you know naked and it is in in the bucket of the company in the bucket then you have to add the appreciable value to dcf to arrive the correct value we need to do one ha huh, sir please yes That's in in, uh, in another case of mine i have opted for that, that very methodology also, as well where uh, i valued the surplus land Yes. and uh, without opting for notional rent i added that to the my dc value and uh, there i mean uh, there i was practically very clear yes it has to be uh, uh, that would be the correct approach but in this particular approach uh, uh, the, uh, this particular commercial uh, operations were being run out of that very premises so what i uh, opted for was and replaceable asset uh, Uh, yes. Method was the ap sir, appropriate this, one. Sir, I opted is, for an equal sir, uh, uh, space, equal yes. office. Opted for the rental methodology for uh, arriving at appropriate DCF, and then added the yes. um, um, uh, fair sir, market value. Sir, this is the reason. If the DCF is coming less and NAV is more, then be sure that one of the assets is not being used. Yes. This is what I am trying to tell everybody here. If you are going to see Raj, what Rajiv sir has said, he is absolutely correct on this part. What he has done, and he has tried to find why DCF is less because some of the asset is underutilized or some the some of the asset is there which is not utilized. So that has to be added to your value to your DCF value. What I am trying to this is the reason why NAV method when you drive when you value through NAV method it is coming more. then the dcf method that simply means you need to go to check your uh, balance sheet you have to check financial statements you have to check your dc your projections there must be some reason for this and what rajiv sir has did he tried to find the reason and then he incorporated that reason reasoning with dcf right sir yes sir this yes. is absolutely what i am trying to say when you thank have you. A, thank you obliged when you have a, a fair you know going concern you know mind then DCF cannot be less. If the DCF is less, then there is something in the financial statement which you need to 
find out and then you have to treat it with your DCF. For example, again, I'm telling you that I have done a DCF and I found that there's a land which is not being used by the company. Then what I'll do, I'll try to find the realizable value of the land minus the carrying, carrying value. Whatever comes will be added to DCF, my value, the enterprise value. And this amount, this value which comes after, you know, adding the realizable value, difference, appreciable value, whatever comes is the, is the actual value of the land. Because that land is not, the projection, the cash flows are not coming through the use of that particular land. So when there is a surplus land, we will take market value of the entire land. Why you need to take only appreciation? Market value, appreciation, sir, appreciation is like uh, the market value minus the carrying value. I'm saying that not one minute. I'm saying not only market value minus carrying value, entire value of market value will add it to the DCF. Uh, sir, if, uh, what I suggest you can do like that, but what I suggest because uh, in the cash flows we have already taken the you know the essence of the carrying value of the uh, lands and all. No, no we are not taking. See, assume that there is a hundred acres of land, twenty five acres I'm using for my business. Sir. So my DCF comes only for 25 acres and also other land and machinery. The 75 lakhs amount, if I sell the business or if I sell the land for 75 acres, sir, my business you is can, going to you run, can, run. You can, you can do, sir. You can do. There are there are different methodology. There are different thought process. Some people take the appreciation only, the uh, appreciation value which is coming. Somebody takes the entire value. It's not wrong because it's just your assumptions that. Uh, you feel that uh, the cash flows are not taking the cash flows are not taking the carrying value. Sometimes people say the cash flows are taking the carrying value, so they don't include. It's okay. You can, but surplus land should be treated. This is why what I'm trying to say that surplus surplus land or the assets which are not being used should be added to the and EV, and then then you will find that going concern is actually achievable, uh, and your NAV will be equal or less than the. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with you. Ravesh, one small yeah. point just to want to extend if this discussion. Your, if, you, if you open your camera, yeah. I'm more comfortable in talking to you. Saurabhji. Yes. Okay. yes. Uh, just to want to extend this uh, discussion, suppose there is a coffee plantation uh, company. It's a huge land. But <clears throat> when I do the NAV, I get 100 rupees. But the company is not doing good, mm. right? With the DCF, the value comes to 50 rupees, for example, mm. right? Now, even if they, when we are saying that there is a problem with the DCF, and I, I see the DCF, if they made that, suppose the company is growing with the 5%. Now, just to match with the 100, the company has to go with the 50% increase in the turnover. Mm. On that basis, I will say that yeah, your DCF is not correct, ah. right? In that scenario, there is no surplus land, right? Ah. When you are talking about because every land is to be uh, counted, used in, used in that word. used it, right? So there there will be a gap between the DCF I, I, and the NAV. I, I got your point, sir. I just wanted to ask you one thing: if you are the investor, you will be more, you know, towards. Uh, getting control on the land if you're an investor and investing my in coffee you know i am uh, i'm manufacturing of coffee i have lots of land and coffee plantation is there so if you're investing in my company what will be what will be your intention to acquire the control on the assets or to earn the profit this is my question if you have answer sir i will be more on the no acquiring the control then of course nav is correct sir but if you are investing for the profits sir then you will not, as a as a you know prudent investor, you will not invest in my company. Right. What this sir, is. Uh, 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 Ravi sir, is this discussion from income tax perspective or? Hey, I am coming. I am coming because sir, this is a very important discussion. People, uh, uh, most of the value don't understand. They try to find an AV method because it is very convenient method. No, but I mean, what, is this is no, this no, from sir, the sir? It is. It it has some part. With income tax, it has some part with income tax. I'll tell you after this. But we are just done with our discussion, I guess. Saurav, sir, you got my point. What I'm trying to say? No, sir. sir when I'm valuing it, what you are saying that as an investor, 
if I am not taking the control, I will, I will go with the uh, profit. Probably, fund. Probably then I will not I will not invest. But the value what I have to put it in my report will it it should go with the DCF or NAV or shall I give both the value? But this That's is a vast NAV. difference. NAV. NAV. Okay. NAV. Right. Because Got it, it is sir. a fair value. It is a fair value. Got it, sir. Thank you. Okay. So we have a lot of discussion, a lot, lot of arguments, and this is the beauty of, you know, seminars like uh, Study Circle. And I have also, you know, gone through very uh, tough questions, and uh, I tried to justify my position here. This was all about companies, that, what I'm trying to say, what I what I've tried to convince you. He, in companies that we try to find the fair value, and we have a presumptions, we have a uh, premise. Uh, Padwil sir, ab mein is pe aa raha hu. Padwil sir. Uh, so what we are trying to say when we are trying to find value as per uh, uh, being a registered valuer, we try to know introspect or we try to see what is there and if the premise is going concern, then we try to avoid NEV and we shift to DCF method to to get the correct value but not in case of income tax but not in the case of income tax income tax has a different approach and this is my fight this is my you know every every from last three years i'm writing to nirmala madam ki ma'am please add registered valuer also for calculating income tax value because there are a lot of issues regarding the board as a valuer, as a company at valuer, I always, in case there is a going concern, I always first give my priority to DCF method. As Saurabh sir said, sometimes it happens that there's a huge difference because the company is not going, doing good. So as a valuer, I had to write it is uh, uh, that it is a going concern, but still I am applying NAV method because it is giving me the two and correct value. Then, as compared to the value I've derived from uh, DCF method, but income tax has a different approach. And what and what what is their intention and what is the thing which we need to understand today is what we read uh, and understand understand on this in this particular seminar. Okay, let me get into the issues valuation under income tax act and contradiction with companies act 2013 sir if we talk about transactions the transactions involving broad transactions general transaction there are a lot of sop sops and buyback i'm not talking about it there are two broad general transaction involved in uh, in equity one is fresh issue of shares there might be ESOPs even there, there will be fresh issue, right? There will be buyback, it is a transfer. So if we broadly look that there are probably two kinds of transactions with equity. There might be more, but broadly two kinds of transactions with equity. One is the fresh issue of shares. And fresh issue of shares is dealt by section 62, read with section 42, with rule 12A of companies, shares, capital, and debenture rules 2014 of Companies Act 2013 and income tax section 5627B when there is a issue of fresh issue of shares. So section 56 subsection 27B read with rule 11U and rule 11UA sub rule 2. It talks about your fresh issue. And the another transaction that is transfer, that is transfer of shares. We have talked about fresh issue, not transfer of shares. Transfer of shares has to do nothing with companies act because there's a transaction between two persons. One is selling its uh, his share and another is another person is buying that share. So companies act is not involved at any stage. Uh, many new valuers call me and say, sir, there's a transfer of shares and I've been appointed as a registered valuer. I need to find out the value, how to do. I said, don't do it because Companies Act does not require you to value a share for transfer of shares. 
So companies that is not involved in transaction transfer of shares, income tax is there who needs to be sorted out. So section 56, subsection 2, clause 7C, 10C, read with 11U and rule 11U, A, sub rule 1, C, B, clause C, B, you have to comply that. Let's us go ahead. See, when we talk about fresh issue of shares by a company, there are probably three kind of issue. One is right issue, another is private placement, and third is preferential allotment, we all know. Let us understand fresh issue of a company by, of a share by a company under income tax act, and we read the provision of that. It says- What is issue also? Sorry, sir? Ha, also. Broad, ha, also. See, broadly, I'm taking because I need to conquer with income tax. So it says where a company, see what section 56 to 7 B has to say for issue of shares by a company, where a company not being a company in which public are substantially interested, receives in any previous year, receives in any previous year from any person being resident, ye khat jayega. This will be abolished. Abhi, uh, uh, a person aane wala hai, not being a resident hat jayega. But there are uh, uh, the government will uh, in this uh, latest financial uh, budget they have subtract they have you know deleted this particular point. Okay, we'll talk about the regime which is currently running. So where a company not being a company in which public are substantially interested receives any consideration receives in any previous year from any person being resident any consideration for issue of shares for issue of shares that exceeds the face value of such shares comma the aggregate consideration received for such shares as exceeds the fair market value of shares sir kya matlab hai Pataunga. don't worry about it but let us break down this entire definition, this entire section. So, abhi yahan card dete hain. Let us not read this. Okay. Where a company receives from any person being resident consideration for issue of shares exceeds the face value. Face, let's say the face value is 10 and the company is receiving money 100 rupees per share as a consideration from a person being resident this is the case that exceeds the fair value, face value of the share the aggregate consideration received let's say there was only one share which has been issued by the company so the aggregate consideration shall be 100 rupees the aggregate consideration received for such share as exceeds the fair market value of the share. Now, this is the face value. This is the face, uh, fair value. This is the value on which the share was issued. And let's say the FMV as per income tax is rupees 75. What the section 56 to 7B is trying to tell you? Sir, 56 to 7B is trying to tell you that there, there is a chance that the face value is rupees 10, whereas the issue price is 100 and the FMV is rupees 75. Sir, this value, you all must agree that this value would have been derived by a registered valuer, right? Section 62, this value must be derived by registered valuer and the issue price probably was issued at the price determined by registered valuer. And this is the price as per income tax 
let us understand more section 56 to 7b there are three kind of values one is the face value another is the registered valuer value issue price and the third is income tax value that is rupees 75 this must be ca or mb right so what section 56 to 7b is saying section 56 to 7b is saying i am writing the section again and again so that you can get into your minds that section 56 to 7b is for issue of shares it is saying that if the the value exceeded the aggregate value you the aggregate value of exceeded by the fair, the fair market value so issue price is rupees 100 multiply by one share and as per income tax the fmv f m v is 75 multiply by one share so the aggregate value is aggregate value above the fair market value as per income tax is rupees 25 into one share so section 56 sub uh, section 56 subsection 27b is saying where a company receives from any person consideration for issue of share that exceeds yani saying receives that exceeds face value of such shares yani hamara wala case the aggregate consideration receives for such share exceeds the fair market value aggregate consideration received as exceeds the fair market value that is rupees 25 what is trying to say a company receives receives any money above the fair face value if it is a case then you have to find the aggregate consideration received for such share as exceeds the fair market value of the share what is fair market value or as per income tax wo kaun sa batate 11 u red with 11 u a2 so let us get back to our whiteboard so what is trying to say if the face value section 56 to 10 is saying if the if the company a company issuing share of face value rupees 10 and the, the company issuing share above the face value let's say rupees 100 as read by rv the aggregate value as exceeds the fair market value the fair market value as per income tax is 75 so this shall be added this shall be added under income from other sources in company when you are computing tax for company you need to add 25 rupees that is rupees 100 minus the 75 or i say the issue price minus fmv as per income tax if it is a case then this 25 shall be added under income from other sources in, in in company right so this is exactly what this particular section is trying to say but there's a point which we have just ignored that not being a company in which public are substantially interested Haan, sir. Uh, see I, I have one suggestion since all are registered value senior members can we quickly move i think we are aware but we wanted to have a little more discussion i know you were uh, trying to say like 
he is not a student this is all a registered member i suggest we can can we move little quickly no no i'll i'll, I'll do it sir i just i'm trying to uh, you know uh, first we need to understand ha huh. hello yeah. what i'm hello. thinking uh, i know but we're trying to make more clear but sir, there are might aware. be there might be some uh, juniors because it's okay I, it's huh. okay we see after all the people ha if uh, so okay. now so now we need to understand can i ha may i ask one question in this yeah yes. i have issue queries i just I, to understand I, I, in morning. this question case yeah which is a practical problem in case a company has a loss and we are having a, and we are having let's say uh, 8 rupees is coming face fair value as per asset minus liability and because of companies that i will issue at rupees 10 10 correct then to make a provision of tax on 2 rupees because for a companies that i cannot issue below 10 below 10 sir then since my fair market value is 8 so i need to make a provision for income tax on that 2 rupees right so practically anybody would have actually made it i just want to understand because we had at a many times we have very good question sir um, please go ahead very good sir, question sir the yeah. point is it says if it exceeds the face value of such share so you are issuing okay. at face value then there is no need to sir, make a provision sir, sir, in my view sir if you read the second line uh, the second last line the aggregate consideration received as exceeds the exceeds fair market value of share So here it is saying it exceeds the fair market value shares. It should be taxed. See what it is saying. If you receive more than ten, suppose I if I issue at eleven, let's say if I issue at eleven, okay. If you are saying okay, I got it. So if I am issuing at ten, then it should not be a challenge. Yeah. Sir, uh, yes, sir. In that the the section has clearly mentioned that uh, if you are issuing a share at a face value or below the face value, then this section only does not get triggered. This section does trigger because uh, if you can read the second line, any consideration for issue of share that exceed the face value. Got it. Got it. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so what we are trying to say? He says I have one point. Whether hmm. only for share, suppose if you go for CCDs, CCPS, at the time of will issue year I'll, one. I'll come. I'll. I have this question query in my. I have this case law. Don't worry about it. so i'll go through it once i will finish this particular uh, uh, you know uh, section okay so what uh, okay so now we need to understand what is not being a company in which public are substantially interested so we need to understand that the which companies are exempt from this so section 2 sub section 18 talks about a company which is not being a company in which public are substantially interested so these are the company in which public are not substantial public are substantially interested so these are the company which are exempt from uh, you know section 56 to 7b one is uh, a company owned by rbi uh, government section 8 company nidhi company cooperatives com uh, shareholders are cooperative companies holding 50% or more listed companies are not you know uh, it's not applicable on listed company Uh, shares not less than fifty percent of voting right held by a government or companies established by a state or central provincial act or subsidiary of such company. So these are the company which are exempt under section fifty six to seven b. So now what we can say that it is for probably for private company or public company which are not listed company. Probably. So listed company is excluded, government company excluded, section eight company excluded, nidhi company excluded. So probably these are the company which we need to take care of. And why we are reading income tax provision? Because when we are doing valuation as per Companies Act, we need to guide our, you know, we need to guide our uh, client. See, this is valuation as per my, uh, you know, methodologies. You go check your tax consultant. and don't come crying with me that lot of taxes has lot of income has been added to a income from other sources because of valuation this is the reason why i am i have touched this particular topic see okay now my question is ki there is a company there is a company let's say there is a company a the shareholders of these companies are government companies and, and are e f there are two companies holding 49% 49% in company a these are the shareholder g and e are the shareholder of company a and this company the president of india 
the president of india is holding 51% shares here and 50.51.5% uh, shares here and these company gne where president of india is holding 51% of the shares are holding around 98% in company a so section 56 sub section 27b will be applicable for company a or not i repeat my question there are two companies gne holding 51% more uh, by president of india and they are holding around 98% 49 49 this company e holding 98% shares of company a and company a is issuing share issuing a share so section 5627b is will be applicable or not in this case. government company no G and E are government company. This is not a government company. This is a just a public public company not listed. A is a public company not listed, whereas G and E are companies where President of India, that is government, is holding fifty one percent, and these both companies are holding for ninety eight percent and aggregate ninety eight percent in company A, and company A is issuing shares. So section 56 will be applicable or not? Yes, not applicable. <coughs> applicable. Not applicable. Correct. My view is also not applicable. So, so let us come uh, on uh, this entire, you know, one page gives you the entire picture that if I am issuing shares at par, there's no problem. If I'm issuing, issuing shares at discount, there's no problem in income tax, but uh, for companies that company that says section 58, I guess it says that you cannot issue shares and discount unless the, 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 the so probably uh, when you issue shares at discount and if you face value, then uh, I think Mike is probably on if somebody can help me in muting her <laughs> Vijeta, can you help me in muting um, ma'am ma for some time okay thank you so the problem arrives when we issue shares at premium and the premium is more as compared to the premium of income tax premium calculated as per income tax is more is uh, is you know less as compared to the premium which we have uh, issued on which we have issued so this is the problem arrives when there is a 100 issue price and 75 is the fmb that is 65 and 90 this is the premium so here is the problem which we need to tackle up tackle now uh, just I want to ask question. We every everybody, you know, uh, are chartered, most of them are chartered accountant. Sir, so there's a clause, fifty thousand rupees clause in section fifty-six. Most of them we find that the aggregate above fifty thousand is less than fifty thousand. If the difference is less than aggregate value is less than fifty thousand rupees, then it is exempt, right? So does this fifty thousand limit is applicable in section fifty-six to seven B or not? Just a weird guesses or those who are confident, please answer it. Guesses are also very uh, welcome. 50,000 limit, which we talk about in section 56, most of the section 56 says, we 50,000 rupees ka ye cap hai before you can, you, you will be exempt. So will be, will this cap is applicable here or not? Anybody? Should apply. Okay. Anybody else? 50,000 cap is applicable or not? It's not applicable. It's not applicable. Yes, it's not applicable. Fifty thousand rupees ka jo capping hai section fifty six to seven mein applicable nahi hai sir. So even one rupee is it is if the premium is uh, even one rupee which is has to be added to your uh, income from other sources it, it should be added. Please remember that fifty thousand limit is not there in section fifty six to seven b. Okay. Venture capital capital company and company notified by central government 
or there is uh, they, this provision gives exemption to two companies one of them are venture capital undertaking from venture capital company and another is company uh, uh, classic class of companies notified by government of india so what are the class of companies notified by government of india let us see this so probably the startups so uh, this circular was issued because lot of startup companies were facing that uh, section 56 furious section 56 to 7b the uh, the the premium was getting added back to the income from other sources and the loss making startups you know uh, they have to give tax on uh, section 56 to 7b because of this section so cbdt came with uh, uh, with this circular on 6th february 2018 and they said that all the cases which are running on uh, section 56 to 7b on startups has to be withdrawn and section 56 to 7b shall not be applicable uh, and this uh, particular circular has been issued by cbdt now just tell me just i want to ask one more question here ki just hold me ha ki what is a startup in the eyes of income tax is it the same startup as per uh, companies act sorry the startup if i gave if i get a dpiit dp iit registration uh, from startup and uh, company is, is being called as startup company is it is the same as in the eyes of income tax as well any guess if we talk about startup and uh, section 56 to 7 b exempt the startups are the startups have same definition as we generally use that a company registered under dpiit is a startup the income tax also assumes the same anybody wants to answer this yes for this section it is the same everybody is okay with that anybody else have different opinion that in the eyes of startup there is some different thing going on or it is the same startup which we generally get dpiit registration for this purpose uh, that holds good not for um, uh, 15 percent uh, discount um, rate of tax okay so they have given certain uh, additional uh, condition that uh, if you want to get this uh, angel tax exemption then uh, the startup also has to fulfill certain other condition as well yes. but it has to be the dpiit cert, uh, certified only yes so the startup you know the definition of startup is slightly different because it added one more thing here form 2 has to be submitted by the startup company to get section 56 to 7b exemption lot of people comes to me and they said i am registered in startup sir and please value my share so i can okay i'll value a share but do you have submitted form 2 as well Sir, form two, form two, sir. No. So we need, as a valuer, we need to understand this also. Ki when there is a client with us who is a startup, please ensure that form two has been filed because section fifty six to seven b exemption will only be there if form two has been submitted. You know. So DPIIT is must. Then form two has to be submitted to get exemption under section fifty six to seven b. If the company is just has registered under DPIIT and not submitted form form two, then fifty six to seven B shall be applicable and lot of consequences, you know, be faced by the uh, your client. So we need to address that also when we are uh, doing consultancy or we are doing valuation for this. Now, the question is, sir, we uh, now we come jump to the uh, this valuation part. So there are two rules which we need to take care of while determining value as per income tax act one is 11 rule sorry rule 11 u 11 u is basically a defining rule it defines the uh, the uh, the balance sheet it defines the num uh, is it for to be every fund raise uh, mesri ji i have not understood your question it is is it to be every fund raised Yes, every fund raise, nahi, you will get form two exemption once. You, if you submitted form two one time, then it is for uh, you know entire thing. Okay, so rule eleven you defines some uh, uh, the balance sheets, who will be valuer, who will merchant, what is uh, merchant bank banker. So it is a defining rule. 
it defines the entire thing and a level ua is actually the uh, the say, rule which helps you to how to determine a value of share okay so 11u is a defining section rule whereas 11ua is something which tells about the method how to calculate the fair market value as per income tax act and when we are talking about please understand one point we many of them will get confused when we are talking about section 5627b we need to check rule 11 ua2 please mind it it's 11 ua2 not 11 ua1 it is the it is 11, rule 11 ua2 which has to be read along with section 56 to 7b so what 11 ua2 says sir 11 ua now let me ask again a question to build your concept sir what do you think 11 ua must have been telling is it all about calculating adjusted nav or the book value nav when we book talk value. about book value adjusted nav adjusted nav what do you think it should be as a as a you know valuer as a company at value of what you what you what do you think it should be sorry sir book value adjusted book uh, is a book value only it's a book value only yes it it talks about book value there is a problem sir this is the problem which is there because as per companies act we try to find even if we have let's say forget dcf sir let's say i have valued a going concern company on the basis of adjusted nav right and as income tax is saying that you have to derive book value of net worth or net worth or the carrying value so this is a problem where section 56 to 7b and 62 for private placement you know they they have a problem between uh, these two uh, sections whereas company act always go for other than right issue it always say go for fair fair value what is fair value adjusted nav or derive through ccm or you derive through uh, dcf method or adjusted nav method but in case of section 5267b it talks about the book value or the carrying value calculated for net worth and who is going to value as for 11 ua2 any idea who will value as per income tax using 11 ua2 formula that is carrying value or book value net worth ca 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 not really anybody anyone can do it yes anyone can do The merchant bank, sorry, registered valuer can also do. The law is silent for eleven U A sub rule two. The law is silent, and even registered valuer can valuer can be engaged for this purpose. So the company secretaries or the CMAs who are not chartered accountant, they can be also be uh, you know engaged for calculating this this value. But the problem is what my problem is. So I think. Uh... So we don't need certificate only company can also do the yes, working yes and... yes 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 very ma'am absolutely correct even the company can uh, value law is silent if if you get chance don't uh, you know uh, don't let the opportunity go at least take the chance uh, take uh, fees for this but no we are doing yes. it regularly but some companies have idea so they say uh, we can also do it yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> even the accountants of the company can do there's no the law the law is basically silent it says that that anybody can do but yeah. what is what is my problem my problem is the companies act methodology and the income tax methodologies are different so this is the base of arguments in every you know point and if you have taken adjusted nav method here you are taking a normal nav of course there will be difference right this is one of the biggest problem with us second if you are going through dcf method then income tax says that merchant banker has to be engaged now the another problem is sir i am a registered valuer as per companies act 247 section and i have used dcf method 
and i derived some value for issue of share uh, issue price of share and if we go to another valuer of this even is he is a registered valuer then he will have a different value and the income income tax is saying go to the you know merchant banker so you think that the value which i i have arrived and the value which merchant banker is arriving will be same or different of course it will be different you know if the company is not you know have some done hanky panky or do just ask him to sir aisi aisi value lani hai but i am saying on a prudent basis i am saying on a you know uh, on a blank blank page that if there is no hanky panky there and the valuation derived by us and the valuation derived by merchant banker for income tax purpose there will be a difference and if our value is more and merchant banker's value is less then the company is in risk the value the difference will be shall be added in under income from other sources while deriving the taxable value of previous year so this is the biggest problem this is the biggest challenge which we face and we need to you know address this when client comes to us we need to make him understand ki look you are not startup you are don't have form to file or dpit registered and you are going for private placement please ensure that you will take uh, uh, valuation as per merchant banker as well right so we need to guide on this so uh, next time when you do a valuation for private placement for a normal private company or a pu public not listed company then you need to guide them also because once they they will come crying sir itna tax lag gaya itna tax lag gaya aapki vidya se okay now let us come to this point sir section 56 rule 11 2 talks about book value of net worth book value net worth of company so you will try to find book value of book value net worth of company through balance sheet right so what should be the date of balance sheet what should be the date of balance sheet it should be the date of balance sheet sorry yes ma'am can i continue yeah yes, date of balance sheet should be the uh, last audited balance sheet which mm -hmm. should have been approved and adapted in the agm exactly it should not be the provisional date of valuation first you try to check if date of if the balance sheet is available on the date of audited financial statements are available on the date of valuation if your answer is no then you have to find the last audited financial statement that too has been adopted in agm that too has been adopted in agm right so please remember when you are doing it for example if i doing valuation for income tax purpose today then i have to go for 31st march 2022 balance sheet which has been audited and approved by an approved and opt adopted in agm right shall we move ahead it means it means that either audited balance sheet which is not approved or if it is not audited is not there we have to go for cannot use balance. sir as per as per income tax rule you cannot use sir but saying no i have been appointed as section the balance sheet of the company has drawn up on the valuation date which has been audited by the auditor of the company appointed as section 224 What 139, 139, 139. Sir, a statutory auditor. What does it mean? It means that the uh, audited balance sheet only, no? Yes, sir. Audited balance sheet adopted. Even if it is not adopted, you cannot use it. Let's say it has been uh, it has been audited, but has been not approved approved in AGM. Then also you will not able to you know use it. Let's go for latest uh, adopted accounts. Yes, sir. This is the biggest problem. Again, there is a problem, sir. As per companies at valuer, we go for provisional balance sheet. At least we get audited financial statement or the provisional balance sheet to get the fair value. Whereas income tax is saying no. Look, go behind, check the audited uh, adopted financial statement. You take that cognizance. Again, sir, uh, uh, Ravi sir, I mean, yes, sir. Uh, I beg to uh, 
uh, I beg to differ yes, here. Yes, yes, the requirement for adoption by the bo uh, adoption by the shareholders uh, is not there under the Income Tax Act. What it says is an audited balance sheet, and first of all, it says it should be on the date of the transaction. So, I mean, let's presume that the transaction has happened somewhere in the middle of the year. And the company has taken the pains to get the accounts audited on the transaction date. Now you cannot ask for the uh, EGM or for a uh, EGM or uh, EGM to be held on the sir, date of the transaction. Read, sir, sir, so that being the case, um, sir, let's read eleven U A two sub rule A. Uh, this is what exactly income tax eleven U S rule U S say U A says. Sorry, eleven U says the balance sheet of such company. As drawn up on valuation date, which has been audited by auditor of the company appointed under Section One Thirty Nine of Companies Act Two Thousand Thirteen or Two Twenty Four under Fifty Six, and where balance sheet is not where the balance sheet on the valuation date is not drawn up. Ah, yes, correct. That's our point. Sheet, the balance sheet. Point. The balance sheet drawn up on the date immediately preceding the valuation date. Which has been approved and adopted in the annual general meeting of the shareholder of the company. So, but, what are you trying to say? I'm coming to the point, sir. What are you trying to say, sir? If a statutory auditor has has you know uh, audited financial statement and the and the uh, the auditor is under section one thirty nine that is statutory auditor is audited, but on the valuation date and it is not adopted under EGM. So, uh, can I take the audited financial statement to derive my uh, value absolutely correct please uh, uh, um, pandil sir well noted point yes you can you can do i'm sorry uh, i have taken this point so uh, let us understand that if today i am valuing a share okay and for the company income tax act and the value and the company has provided me provisional balance sheet then i need not to go with that i need to check the last audited financial statement adopted in the agm but in case i got a audited financial statement approved by board of course it will be approved by board first so i can take up for the purpose of valuation for income tax purpose right everybody is okay with that everybody is okay with that any problem any issue So, so what problem we face normally is like investment type companies where there are a lot of properties. When we go for companies at valuation, we take the yes. fair market value yes. of the property, the and the value comes very higher. Yes, yes. And here, here definitely the book value is very, very less. Yes. So there is no chance of doing DCF here. Yes. So this, how to solve this type of situation? Uh, this is the problem. Why I have choose this topic. so that i can let people to know that this is the biggest problem which we are facing in income tax and as per in company uh, as per companies act and we need to write consistently to the authority that look you have to change it and the income tax came up with a public document which i'll show you they have added few of the methodologies under section 56 to 7b which which we'll talk about they have added but they have they have it is just for public uh, comments it's not yet uh, you know uh, issued by ministry okay uh, but, sir ravish sir, uh, sir why should we go to the we go to the extent of reconciling the company tax valuation with the income tax valuation as long as the company tax valuation or the allotment which is done is at a price higher than the income tax valuation be done with that so, i mean uh, here was a case where uh, madam mentioned that As per the DCF methodology, the companies in the case of an investment company, the DCF value was uh, the the DCF value was higher. But when it comes to the net asset value, it was much lower. So, uh, so be it. I mean, that should not create I, any problem. I, I, I agree. I agree. But but the problem is the company don't know about it. The company don't know the consequences. We need to make them understand. Okay, look, this is companies. This is valuation as per because, sir, we when we are you know when we are we are uh, engaged by client, it's our responsibility to educate them also. So, the people they are going to be taxed. No, there are many times I have seen that the huge valuation came two thousand rupees. A uh, valuer has defined two thousand rupees, and the the value as per income tax coming let's say three hundred rupees, and the company don't even know about this. they are happy ki yes i got 2000 rupees 
they don't know ki look 1700 rupees you have to take tax on it also okay. if you do not reconcile then the difference between fair market value with it and the issued value will be taxable yes yes this uh, is the reason so we need to you know educate our client what i am trying to say this is the topic why i have touched this topic this is the reason sir yes. but i think in this case merchant banker valuation is permitted with the dcf yes. no yes it is permitted sir but of course there will be difference ki because what we value let's say we have derived value 300 rupees for equity and the merchant banker has a different you know thought process they have derived some other figure then again there is a difference so it should, what, be, it should be more than uh, rv value no no otherwise there is an impact ha there is a recent case my value was coming 35 rupees the other person the company was they have a good professionals they you know contacted dcf uh, uh, this uh, merchant banker and they got report for 50 rupees so they are happy no issue, no issue. <laughs> so they are happy if so 20 rupees then it is issue ha so they they was happy my my valuation was 35 rupees merchant bank banker came with 50 rupees the company was happy and i told them to go with the merchant banker and if my value is more than the merchant banker value then you have to pay tax the value came 50 rupees they are very happy so this is what we can value add to our clients what i am trying to say it's not it's our job is over after giving them value but it's a kind of value addition for a client because the client will come again to you ki sir sir but if the 50 rupees value is coming from the merchant bank then what is uh, why the tax would come because the dcf is also a prescribed method nahi nee, nahi nee, no no tax will be there sir in that case no tax will be because ah, my, so value, no tax will be. my value, that is why the company was happy the company was happy yeah. but if the dcf comes in 21 rupees if the dcf comes 21 rupees difference between 21 35 is taxable yes sir yes sir that is why so, say they were happy to get you know 50 rupees but the problem is suppose if uh, when company is issuing shares they got both the reports one rv report for 35 rupees income tax uh, merchant banker valuation but so 50 rupees and the merchant, a company is agreeing with the value uh, issue of share at the 35 rupees so the difference will be if the difference is more then company is into their uh, reconciliation the company the, see the company uh, the company may say that the my value the issue price is, is how can the issue price be lower but we have you know a lot of discussions with companies when we issue shares we discuss with them we discuss on the you know uh, vac and we discuss on them uh, the beta so these are the these are the things which makes some difference and the vac as per my my you know calculation the vac as per mb there was a difference but so, in general what the people do is they'll try to with the two or three rupees income tax value is more than three rupees than the rv <laughs> sir <laughs> sir the, the the session is being recorded so i don't want to use that word basically but you got my point what i'm trying to exactly say okay and why the company was happy okay so um, again this is the summary i have already we have already gone through the entire thing one you can go the previous slide ha ah, it's nothing that if see for right issue if you're going to right issue don't bother it go for face value you will not face any consequences in income tax act as well as companies act because in companies act don't require for share to be valued for right issue and as per income tax if you sh issue share at face value then there will be no problem so right issue always try to go for face value right so this is what i have written in this for preferential allotment you go for you know try to find uh, the nexus between the dcf and uh, companies act uh, companies act dcf and uh, you know income tax merchant banker dcf so this is all the summary um, that we have to go through it now it comes transfer or gift of shares section 5627 uh, section 56 subsection 2 clause 7, 10c <clears throat> read read with 11u and 11u a sub rule 1 clause cb so uh, please remember section 5627b deals with section uh, rule 11u a 2 although section 5627 comes before section 56210 but it goes to 11 ua2 whereas section 56210c goes with 11 rule 11 ua1 cb you have to remember that then when you are uh, you know consulting your client for transfer of shares then section 
टू टेन सी रेड विद रूल इलेवन यू एंड इलेवन यू ए वन सी बी रेड विद सेक्शन फिफ्टी सी ए ऑफ द इनकम टैक्स एक्ट एंड द कंपनी दैट आर इज नॉट इन्वॉल्व हेयर सो वॉट सेक्शन फिफ्टी सिक्स टू टू टेन से इट से एनी प्रॉपर्टी लेट से शेयर एनी शेयर ट्रांसफर्ड और गिफ्टेड विदाउट कंसिडरेशन द एग्रीगेट फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू विच एक्सीड्स फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज कॉमा द होल ऑफ द एग्रीगेट मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ सच शेयर शेल बी एडेड बी फॉर अ कंसिडरेशन विच इज लेस देन एग्रीगेट फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टी the amount by the amount exceeding 50000 rupees the aggregate fair market value of such property as exceeds the consideration matlab kya sir iska matlab ye hai iska matlab kya hai sir 562 56210 it's saying ki there might be a gift gift without consideration if it is a without consideration then the entire amount the entire amount shall be added to those who is receiving receiver of money and if it is with consideration then the money paid fm money paid and actual value actual fmv if this is less that is fmv minus money paid or consideration paid the aggregate value shall be added to the person who is receiving the shares right sir any doubt on this any problem regarding this okay now again a question came the question is there is a issue of share issue of share by a company face value rupees 10 issue price rupees 100 theek hai fmv is rupees 120 sir this is the value we have derived the company has no problem the company has issued share uh, At rupees hundred, the FMV was coming one twenty. So company is happy. Company has no problem at all, right? But the person who is receiving the share, receiving a share worth rupees one twenty for hundred. So twenty shall be added. Sir, twenty shall be added or not? No. Sure, sir. Yes, it should be added. It should be added, sir. It it's a gift, a sort of uh, gift uh, being received. Absolutely. Twenty issue of shares. This for issue of shares, not for transfer. Sir, 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 sir. Issue of shares for company, any company other than company. Not substantially interested वाला वो कंपनी पर अप्लाई होता है बट यहां पर इफ यू सी यहां पर इफ यू सी ट्रांसफर ऑफ शेयर सर ट्रांसफर ऑफ शेयर कंपनी इज ट्रांसफरिंग कंपनी इशूइंग यू आर रिसीविंग एनी प्रॉपर्टी अदर देन इमूवल प्रॉपर्टी शेयर इंक्लूडेड हेयर फॉर कंसिडरेशन विच इज लेस देन फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टी बाय एन अमाउंट एक्सीडिंग फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज The aggregate fair market value of such property as exceeds the consideration. Sir, Ravi sir, uh, here I just want to uh, point it out uh, that uh, uh, in the big four, what uh, we used to take the position is that 
uh, when the company is issuing the share, it's not a property in existence. When okay. it issued, then only the shares comes into existence and hence 56.210 does not get triggered when the company is issuing a share in the hands of the recipient. So uh, we in the, uh, before we used to take that position. But it's a, a kind of a, uh, so we used to tell the clients that this is the position we are taking up. And if they are okay there's with a that. Recent, there's a recent, uh, you know, IT bench decision on. So there may Yes, yes, yeah, it's a so, quite so old one. So, so it, it, if you go, if you have gone through, they have talked, they have said, yes, it is applicable, but it is not applicable in case of right issue. No, so they are talking it's applicable for right issues. Sir, sir, right issue. sir, right issue. sir, uh, sir, here, the fair market value which we have to consider would be the fair mm -hmm. market value coming, coming, sir, coming, sir, as per the as, as per, per the income the, tax, uh, as per the income uh, tax. As per the book value, adjusted book value. No, one. no, adjusted book value. One. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Secondly, uh, secondly, uh, when it comes to uh, allotment, uh, if it is a proportionate allotment, irrespective of whether it is rights or not, if it is a proportionate allotment, then the bank, uh, the Bombay High Court Tribunal decision also speaks about the same thing. Is that if it is a proportional, there's a uh, pro then there's no. It's not a property. It's not a property. No, it it is. I mean, the fact whether it's a property or not has not been touched upon in the Bombay uh, High Court, uh, Bombay Tribunal decision. Uh, they just talk about whether it's a proportionate allotment or not. The fact whether uh, shares allot allotted are property or not is still not uh, actually addressed. Actually, what 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 uh, previously gentleman said, Sagar said, I, I, Sagar sir has said. Actually, what we presume that if it is a proportionate allotment, then it is not a property. Mala, what we cognizance, what we take into cognizance, what you are saying, it's right also. But as as a you know, uh, when we talk about uh, this key, when there's a proportionate, um, you know, uh, uh, proportionate issue of shares to everybody, it's in proportion. So we don't consider it as a property. When it is not property, we exclude section fifty six to seven two ten. But when there is a disproportionate allotment, when there is a disproportionate allotment, then section 56 to 10 shall be applicable. But sir, I got your point. What you're saying exactly what I am saying, but it's just that we don't consider property. So it's a property hai nahi, section 56 to 10 nahi lagega. But we need to take care of this also. Because many, many people have said ki nahi lagega, sir lagega. Agar wo disproportionate kar tare se hai, then section 56 to 10 will be also applicable. And yes, Padwil sir has rightly said that in this case, adjusted NAV shall be considered not the book value NAV. So at least we get some relief in this part. So what is the problem? The problem is section 56 seven b 62 of the Companies Act and 56 to 10 C. We need to take care of that. What uh, the gist of my whole entire seminar is to you have to take care of that. The three things. And again, Section 256, 10 c we calculate as per adjusted NAV. Adjusted NAV is nothing but you take the appreciable asset, that is jewelry, land, uh, your shares, cross holdings, ne? you take on the fair value and then you arrive the adjusted NAV per share. And that is for 11 UA1C. And again, you can go for DCF value also. So 11 UA2, uh, we don't consider. Adjusted book value. Sorry, sir. 11 UA2. 11, 11 UA1BC. Adjusted. That's for, anyway. That is for transfer of shares, sir. Yes, sir. Transfer. Of, basically, we say transfer of shares, but, sir, when you, a company is issuing shares in disproportionate manner, as, as Sagar, sir, has pointed out, Padwil, sir, has pointed out, then it is called, it, for, I consider it's not a property. If it is in proportionate form, then 56 to 10 does not apply. But if there is an uneven uh, uh, issue of shares, 
disproportionately issue of shares then 56 to 10 shall be applicable because i consider it is now it is a property so it is here also, under the 5627B also, we can use the adjusted NAV, right? Sir, Abhi, the, the income tax has came up with a uh, public, you know, uh, a kind of uh, public, uh, they have uh, invited public comment on mm -hmm. the, the three or four, five, seven more new, you know, methodologies. But they, they have not issued their, uh, you know, circular that it is applicable. So section 511UA, Sub, sub, uh, sub rule 2 shall be applicable in case of 56 to 7 B. For other than equity, sir, other than equity, you can use uh, this adjusted NAV, other than equity. For example, if, uh, if we are going for CCDs, if you're going for preference shares, then we can use section uh, 11 UA1 rule that is adjusted NAV. But for equity, we need to go for 11 UA2 only. What I understood. But sir, under section 5627B, the proviso, what they have given, they have clearly mentioned that we can use the uh, whatever method we can uh, use to the satisfaction of the assessing officer and that they have mentioned that you can add the value of the all the intangible assets, uh, the value of the uh, everything under the uh, second proviso of section 5627B. Uh, sir, as per my understanding, uh, I, for my understanding, it is basically going to 11 U82. I need no, to. No, sir. You can then. just open the section 5627B, the section, not okay. the rule. Okay. So, under the section 5627B, uh, uh, I, I just read the proviso to. Okay, okay. Sa Sagar, sir. Sagar, sir. I, I have a point here. The, yeah. the thing is, <clears throat> if, <laughs> if the methodology used by the merchant banker, mm or by the uh, company itself uh, is not acceptable, then uh, how practical would it be for the ASing officer to accept a method which is not any of these? It no, will so be very I difficult. Will, it will, no, so although, I will, I will, although for I'll all do. practical purposes, although for all practical purposes, this provision is there, uh, or, or theoretical purposes, this provision ah, is will, there, will, it would be very agree. difficult. Yes, I agree. No, sir, I will, I will I tell you where, where it is applicable. For example, uh, just go to section 56 to 7B and second proviso. So, if there is a company, okay, where which is issuing the shares, okay, now just imagine that company is a holding company, wherein it also holds the 10, uh, 15 subsidiaries under it. Okay, just go below, sir. Further. Further below. Hmm. Uh, down. It's... Yes, the, the, the fair market value shall be the value as may be prescribed under the method or as may be substantiated by the company to the satisfaction based on the value and the date of the issue of the shares of the asset, including intangible asset, goodwill, know-how, copyright, trademark, franchise, or any other business commercial right of similar nature. So basically, Sir, if it the is company talking about, it isn't talking about uh, intangible assets only, intangible goodwill, who know how franchise or, or any all other business sim of similar nature, sir. All the assets. So basically, I will give you the example. If the company is a holding company, sir, sir it seems sir similar nature. Yeah. So it says it includes. So it says it includes. That means yeah. I think it's a bigger. Yeah, so basically, here if we are using any method which can be substantiated to the satisfaction of the assessing officer. For example, we have countered one uh, uh, method, uh, one uh, case where the company was a holding company. It was holding 10 to 15 subsidiaries under it. Now, oh, if you go to the pure, pure NAV method, A minus L, you are just encountering only the book value. Nice. But while the... Nice. For that purpose, sir, for, if you have to go to that company and then again A minus L has to be done. Or you will no, that, that 56 to 70 is not prescribing. That only so, the adjusted I mean, rate, I, sir, that in, only in such a case, is prescribed. Adjusted sir, in, in such a case, in such a case, the even if you apply the DCF method for the holding company, DCF method on the holding company will be based on the DCF method on the subsidiary company. That's how the yes. holding company's yeah. investment will be valued. Mm -hmm. So that should be an acceptable method under 11 UA itself, and there is no need for us to go to the provision. The point is. When the accepted methods itself are questioned by the assessing officer, 
do you think he will be agreeable on a method other than the acceptable methods highly unlikely uh, he will always a, dispute a, these points basically under 5627b the method prescribed is pure book value a minus l they have never mentioned that whatever is the value of the investment appearing in a balance sheet you have to get the fair market value okay no we use so we, we use the dcf method there we use the dcf method there if you are no, talking about 5627b dcf is a separate thing Adam Sagar is giving a point where he is saying neither I want to go for DCF, neither I want to go to asset minus liability, which is a absolutely, method. absolutely. I want to get the interest rate. No, there is there is but one sir, ITAT but judgment, sir, but there is one ITAT judgment of NUB Multi Trade Private Limited, it's ITAT judgment where the assessee wanted to issue on a face on a fair value of immovable properties. It's a real estate company having a immovable properties, and the assessee said I cannot give a DCF. That will not make sense. so i will give you fair market value of the property i don't want an investor to come at cost i want investor to pay the premium because i have already bought a land 10 years back so this was rejected by assessing officer but income tax appellate authority has quashed the order and say why assessing officer has not applied his fine <coughs> because it is a method which is it is substantial and he is only used circle rate he has not used any very high fair value he said just circle rate so assessing it allow that Sir, even fifty uh, section fifty six ten, that is eleven U A one B C, says that you cannot take. Uh, you have to take circle value only. If you go to the eleven U, it. Uh, no, sorry, if you go to eleven U, I can go to adjusted net value also. We can go that if if we want to. Sir, it was. Sir, system. it was for it was for equity or it was for preferential. Issue. Equity issue. Equity issue shares. Uh, sir, the very the the very fact that it was gone to the tribunal. Speaks speaks volumes of the fact that the assessing officers will not accept it. Sir, so but I have to I mean, disputable. Sir, so but DCF method. Sir, I guess it was a preferential allotment. I prefer sorry, preference shares. I guess if I am not wrong, it was equity also equity and preference both equity also. Okay. okay. Uh, because in preference you will not take A minus L because it's a Jaipur waste case only, so we know exactly. the case uh, ah. better uh, ah. because it's a one of our known colleague argued in ITAT. See the problem is the word up to the satisfaction of assessing officer has a different terminology and different understanding in practical ways. So he doesn't want to take any call. He says I don't understand any other method. He is only limited to this because of his ignorance. But if I go to upper level of law, for sure. And I understand what the third point is. Why I want to take my client to a ITAT level? Let us try to adjust Sir, the. Sir, uh, so in, in, in such a, in such a case in such a case. i believe the more practical approach would be that saying that the market value of considering this particular land as a surplus asset and saying that this particular land the saleable value of this particular land or a or a, a highest and best use of this value of this particular property would be the market value and in the dcf value uh, in, incorporate this particular market value arrived the value at purchase in such a case the, at least the assessing officer will not be able to dispute it we know we need not have to i mean uh, the chances of encountering any disputes will be lesser uh, from from uh, from my limited I experience hope, uh, you, but sir, i hope that... you are also aware of the many uh, uh, many rulings of the itat where dcf is the most challenging method from the department ah. side because the what happened exactly hey, when you are uh, using the dcf using the projection okay the assessment comes up after 2 to 3 years okay at that point of time the actual numbers of the companies are available so that that, that at the point of time the what the assessing officer are comparing the actual number with the projection and many of our clients uh, when i was there in the uh, ey so many of the big uh, mncs were uh, facing the litigation that whatever projection you have made it's uh, not on the fair assumption so they are actually comparing the actual number which is available after 2 to 3 years yeah, yeah. with the projected numbers so dcf is more they, prone they, to litigation sir there are more cases which says that once the once the uh, once the uh, prescri once the prescribed method dcf method has been uh, prescribed method dcf being the sir, prescribed sir, method sir, I, i'm not I'm, i'm not done here uh, so once the prescribed method is when uh, uh, the ssc furnishes the the valuation report from a merchant banker using the prescribed method uh, disputing the prescribed method uh, disputing the value is not the uh, the right prerogative of the sc sc assessing officer is also i mean there are a lot of cases on those so i stand in a better footing what i'm what i'm trying to say is i'm standing a better footing uh, better footing by by submitting a uh, dcf 
uh, DCF report from a merchant banker rather than going and taking the benefit of the proviso. Sir, the same question has came to uh, one of the cases that was settled by ITAT Chennai bench. Uh, there was an issue regarding the DCF methodology. The projections were too high. The AO has, you know, uh, rejected the uh, DCF on the basis that the actual figures are different and the projections are different. And it was settled by ITAT and it was said, ki, no, uh, there's, there's, there will be always a difference between the projections and the actual. So uh, you cannot challenge on that part. But yes, the projection should not be, you know, exorbitant high or should not be touching the skies. The projections should come with the logic. And if there's a logic, the AO cannot reject the uh, DCF or the projections just because they are not as you know uh, equal to the actual the actual uh, 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 the actual revenue of the company. Right. This was the course which, course which was settled. Okay. Let us discuss. Let us discuss few good points here. Sir, uh, before that, I have one doubt. Yes, sir. No, for the issue of shares. As I said, for preferential allotment, we'll go for RV report for the company tax, for income tax tax. Since 11, you have to be permit two methods, the DCF method and the other method to satisfaction of the single officer. Whether same valuation report can the management uh, be used as an uh, to the satisfaction uh, of the Sir, RV, 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 wala? Yeah, RV, wala. Sir, for existing for, uh, for, uh, for book value, NAV, there's no required, and uh, even uh, your value. After uh, value to fair value, karenge, not required, but in second case, of course, it will be needed, sir. Of course, it will be needing, and uh, our valuation report will not suffice, I guess. This is my interpretation because no, the, you are not the word, is, word it says is to the satisfying of the but, but for 11 U82, it's saying the law is silent. How will you, you know, uh, how will you satisfy the IO? The AO does not recognize section 247 values. Well, when it's not there, one among you say any method, no, when it's uh, satisfaction, even this also can be one of the method. Can I'm only just saying, uh, can he accept? Uh, can we satisfy him? Sir, the it's very, uh, I don't think the AO will be agree with without any, uh, you know, uh, value, uh, without any valuation report of chartered accountant. I don't think it, he will be satisfied because he don't, don't recognize even the registered valuer. If he is don't recognize the registered valuer and you are not using book value and the book, the, the calculation, the, 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 the methodology which is given in 11 UA2, the book value in AV. And it says for this, you not, need not to go for any other, uh, I mean, no other value you have to go. Even the accountant or the director's uh, valuation will all be suffice. But if you are using any other method, then of course, I think uh, chartered accountant should be there to value the Any other, uh, you know, people having any other, um, you know, thought process, please come and let's discuss on this issue also. Very uh, important issue that if we are going for adjusted NAV method as per the provision two, then valuation will be required by chartered accountant or it can be done through any other person because I am taking an inference from 11 UA 11 UA 1 BC, where it is said that if you going for adjusted NAV method, then chartered accountant valuation report will be required. So I am taking inference from that that if you are going through 11 uh, 56 to 7 B and you are trying to find adjusted NAV method, then a chartered accountant valuation report will be there. So uh, sir, issue one is what if we issue or transfer preference shares or such equity other than uh, for or such security other than equity. So we will apply simple book value method or adjusted NAV method in case of issue of preference shares. So it was settled that issue of preference share for other security than equity, we have to go to fair market value and the fair market value arrives through your adjusted NAV method. So for preferential, preferential, you need not to go for this and uh, carrying value of NAV. Issue two, what if there is an issue of equity by company other than cash or consideration? 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कंपनीज एक्ट में कैश कंसिडरेशन विद विदाउट कैश यू कैन नॉट गो फॉर इट एंड इफ देयर इज सम काइंड व्हिच इज इन्वॉल्व देयर ऑफ कोर्स सेक्शन 5627 विल बी एप्लीकेबल थर्ड व्हाट इफ शेयर शेयर्स आर इशूड अबव द वैल्यू डिटरमाइंड बाय रजिस्टर्ड वैल्यू वी ऑलरेडी कवर्ड दैट इन केस ऑफ इन केस ऑफ issue of shares to non resident by company from whom we require report chartered accountants we require report from cas as well for firma purpose issue 5 it does it mandatory for ao to exercise determining of market value of shares yes of course if the uh, if you know the ao has some issues with the valuation they have to consider and determine the value uh, value using the methodologies they they cannot you know on their discretion says no this is the wrong value this is the right value okay does section 5627b is applicable on ccd when this convert into equity ccds if in the nature of equity yes section 5627b is applicable ccds if in the nature of debt then of course the uh, fair market value now question number 7 is important if rounding off Two nearest rupees allowed in section fifty six to fifty six to seven B and fifty six to ten C. Any any answer for this? Rounding of two nearest rupee is allowed or not? Chandra Shekhar ji, Sumit sir. I I think we are doing by practice, but I think is not permitted. Yes, ne rounding of. to nearest rupees is not allowed in income tax act even if it is coming 56 paisa 36 paisa then it has to be taken 56 and 36 paisa only nearest rupees rounding off is not allowed in section 5627b and 10c it is mandatory to get financial statement audited on financial valuation date yes it is mandatory if not go for previous audited financial statement on on, on where it is mentioned ravish uh, we should not like round it off sir there is a case case uh, case law which has been settled i am giving you uh, the case law 6 point uh premium uh which uh, it is 7th issue number 7 2457 7. sir rounding off the provision 56 to 7b 11 ua nowhere provides for rounding off to nearest rupee or multiple in hundreds or tens and thus FMV of the fair value fifty five six zero point seven five three five six zero point seven seven per share as per eleven UA, but share was issued on thirty six hundred rupees per share. In addition, there was an addition made on this respect uh. has been ma already made, sir. I will give you uh, the case law also. I have not written the case law. There was a case law which has been settled, and the AO was correct in adding point seven seven pes. I mean, the difference to the nearest rupees. Hey, Ravish, I understood that. Okay, it is they made as a forty rupees as a rounded off. But usually, what we do, like okay, it is come like the three fifty six point seventy eight paise. Then three fifty seven will round it, off. It, like it, nearest one rupee, not like hundred rupees it, here. It don't make any significant difference in the uh, sir valuation in the you know the the value which is then added. But as per in income tax act, there is no way where it is written that rounding off is permissible. This is my point, sir. Okay. And so, you has you has added. So Venkata, what happened in this case was Assessi took a plea that income tax in income you around off you allow me to round off till next hundred. So mm -hmm. here I am also taking the same provision and rounding off from three five six zero to three six six double zero. That was his argument. Mm -hmm. And then they say you cannot use income tax provision of one section to another section for your convenience. Convenience. So practically one rupee is what will you all do? But we cannot go to ten or hundred rupees rounding off. That was the case of this just. Ah, although, this although sir, although sir, uh, if we go through the uh, section, it is not permitting to rounding off. Although the the value which comes, you know, adding the uh, the uh, points seventy seven paisa, it comes very low. It will not make any significant difference. But of course, the act is not saying that you are going for a round off in nearest rupee. Okay. So I have two queries. Can I ask? Yes, yes, please. So one is regarding transfer of shares, the valuation date, because mm -hmm. normally the transfer comes in between the year and the audited balance sheet is not practical. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So shall we take the unaudited on the date of transfer, the last audited? Because sometimes unaudited gives much higher value because the profits of that year. Mm -hmm. Audited figures you can take for eleven section fifty six two ten. 
uh, it does not require for you know uh, adopting uh, adopting uh, the adopting is not system. there but my query is suppose the value as per last audit it comes to 95 rupees but mm -hmm. as per the uh, unaudited if we just refer it it comes to maybe 120 rupees because of the profits of the half year actually, uh, so, actually 11 u 11 u again says that I'm going to 11 u. It again says that valuation date. Valuation date yeah. will be the date on which you have uh, the, that, the value, the audited financial statement on the valuation date. And if it is not there, then you go to the previous adopted financial statement. What exactly? No, it doesn't say previously adopted no, for transfer. Transfer doesn't just, just is silent. Just says audited. audited. It says audited transfer. financial statement. Yes, it says audited financial statement. Uh -huh. uh, there's a slight difference. So then how to tackle that? Because maybe when the case go for scrutiny or uh, then the audited balance sheet is available of that year. Ma'am, this is a big challenge for transfer of shares. They given it as on the date of transaction, trans this uh, fair market value. The two questions. Assuming that today we are having some transaction transfer of shares. I don't have neither audited nor provisional accounts. Not provisional, correct. If I go for provisional accounts. Then uh, again, there is a challenge. Assuming that if you go on um, uh, 30th uh, June, 30th June is the transaction, but uh, audit provision record will be completed by 31st July. 31st July. So they say transaction uh, uh, numbers were from 1st July to 31st July not considered. So what we have done is one case is like this we took a 30th June as a valuation date. We have done the provision accounts and audited by 15th of July. Proportion one month profit, whatever is there from the previous year, 15 days proportion we added just to avoid. That's what we have done practically. Okay, okay. yeah, the same, the same thing, same kind of thing I am also following. But uh, so is, one more thing regarding the, yeah. But there is no way that to avoid the valuation report, but especially small transfer of shares, unless there is a major shareholder, exactly. this is a big challenge. This is a big challenge. This is the reason why, you know, I am saying again and again that we need to write this when you know this budget comes we need to write it we need to write you know, highlight these problems which we are facing and uh, you know we have to go to the ministry say ki, this is the biggest problem we are facing right now yes ma'am another question your your yeah another question is regarding preference share valuation for transfer uh you told it's the adjusted nam method but i am doing dca for that because it's, it's also this, okay it's okay ma'am you can do it. It's not specify any method. It's silent for the method. Yes, yes. Actually, it for you know the if you go to section fifty six to seven b, it says eleven u eight two applicable applicable for equity and as other securities as uh, it will fetch in open market, hmm. and it is open for you. For open market, you can apply for adjusted NAV. For open market, you can say for DCF. It's 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 allowed, ma'am. It's not a problem. And one thing you told CCD in the nature of equity and debt, is there anything anywhere specified in the act this time or any case law for this? Uh, act, yes, there's a one case law for CCD. If, Can you just mention uh, the name? I have, I have probably mentioned it in my this slide only. If I not, I'll... Huh. But we'll, we'll get this presentation. Was, I'll, it, huh, I'll, I'll, I'll send you, ma'am. It is decided by it but I have not mentioned that uh, particular case. I'll I'll mention that case. I'll mention that, okay. that case. Okay. Thanks a lot. There are some is other issues that if huh, another good good uh, you know a case study is if shares are issued by subsidy to wholly owned company on a premium exceeding fair market value, shall fifty six two seven B is applicable or not? It will attract or not? Any idea? If shares are issued by subsidy, subsidy to wholly owned company on a premium exceeding fair market value, shall it will attract section 56.27b or not? Vidhi ma'am, any idea? Yeah, I have never uh, seen yes, anything yes, which yes, says it will not be applicable. Uh, it will not be applicable. It's, it's not. It's not it's proportionate. Because proportionate. It will not be applicable. It was settled by IDT Delhi bench in particular case. And they said ki, you cannot uh, charge tax on your own income. Right. Uh, second question is SSE had issued shares on value determined by independent valuer using DCF methodology. EO rejected the methodology on the grounds that other method prescribed as by 11 UA must be adopted to end past order. Is AO justified? Of course not. If it is a discretion of the SSE to select any of the method and 
if he has used a particular method ao has to adopt that method and has to you know pass order on that basis only the ao next question the ao on scrutiny rejected the value of share determined dcf provided by ssc on the basis that there was a significant difference in actual performance and projected value which we just we were discussing the dcf was the dcf is prepared on the basis of projection and since the projections are high in compared to actual figures in next two years of the previous year, AO has rejected the report. It seemed that uh, you know the projections were high and actuals were low. So AO has rejected on the ground that the the uh, the particular projections are not correct. So DCF value is incorrect. So he has rejected the entire process. So he was wrong. It was settled again. It was again. Uh, it was again settled by ITAT Chennai branch, and they said that if there is a logical Pro, uh, projections then of course you cannot or add add back or you cannot change the you know take different projections or actual actual figures for dcf methodology but if it is illogical and you know it, the projections are touching skies and moons then of course the projections will, can be uh, rejected on that basis and the question is a company convert company converted optionally converted debentures into non cumulative preference shares on the price of ocd where the non cumulative preference share less at the time of conversion since there is a difference between the value of non cumulative preference share and the sum so collected at the time of issuing ocd the ao made addition the AO was justified or not? The AO was not justified because it, it was optionally converted. It's not compulsory converted uh, uh, debentures uh, with a predetermined value and predetermined rates. So it he was not justified in this case, and it was also settled by ITAT. Now, uh, last <clears throat> point to be discussed is SSC followed method of fair value of land and building to arrive value of preference shares on premium. He has issued preference share on the basis of above calculation. That is, he has issued preference share on the basis of ad adjusted NAV. So TPO has adopted carrying value of NAV method and recalculated the same, and he's made it an addition. A was justified or not? A was not justified in this case. Again, settled by ITAT, and they said that the book value is for equity it's not for other securities for other securities for section 56 to 7 b says it what it will fetch in open market so uh, the the calculation the method used by the ssc was correct and the income which ha has been added back was wrong by tpo so probably this i have few more startups and uh, we have discussed with mr ravish yes mr. Sir. Uh, I think BVM managing company just requested since it is the time is up to 9 30. Yeah, I've done, sir. I'm done. I'm done, sir. Uh, uh, members, I, I think if there are any questions are there, one or two questions we can take. Otherwise, since 9 30 is over, can we proceed with this uh, worth of time? Uh, so, if there are no questions, I take uh, this opportunity to thank Mr. Ravish Choudhury on behalf of Bangalore Valors Association. And uh, on this today morning, it is a very good session. It is a world topic, but there's a nuances, what it discussed, and also all the various uh, is minutely covered, including definitions, including companies, public companies in which uh, public are not interested, like even government company. We always uh, companies not in pub, uh, public in which perception is not interested means will go only for listed companies. Uh, so I think uh, yes, go from the uh, uh, thread bear all the definition. I thank uh, Ms. <coughs> Choudhury for her. Excellent presentation on the Saturday morning uh, on behalf of all Bangalore uh, Valors members. I also thank uh, participants for uh, active participation. Uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, our uh, as a token of our appreciation from Bangalore chapter of uh, Bangalore Valors Association. There's a compliment to uh, Mr. Ravisha. Thank you, sir. And I'll share my uh, the entire PPT and other documents to you very soon. Thank you. Ravish uh, to uh, become a member of the uh, Bangalore Values Association. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And thank you for acceding to our request and uh, presenting your valuable uh, time and uh, sharing your knowledge. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's a very and interesting was, uh, subject and uh, very useful to us. Thank you. I had a great, great brainstorming for me also. Uh, I have corrected and noted some points uh, recently while discussing. And uh, of course, with this kind of uh, you know discussion, I am eager to become uh, member of BVA right now because it was uh, the the quality of discussions was so great that you know this is the uh, just we finish this session and I'll join BVA. Thank you. And this moment will be correct to your uh, Vijaya. Hi, yes, sir. I will, sir. I will take it, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.